But this one is also for convolutions and uh, we are not going to seek help from any other model, let it be linear or trees. And it's going to introduce the concept of a CAM. It's a class activation map for a particular category that is going to indicate the discriminative image regions used by a CNN. It's very similar to the first paper that we saw, but uh, it's going to be more generic. It's actually going to help you come up with bounding boxes on part of your image that are important without having labels in your data set for bounding boxes. It's going to help you locate objects in your image in the absence of any labels. But let's see how it works. So the concept is brushing teeth. These are two examples of images going in the network. And the outcome of class activation map are these heat maps that are telling us that the algorithm is focusing more on the brush and the mouth area. So there is a brush here, there is a brush here. For cutting trees, the algorithm is focusing on the man and uh, the chainsaw, similarly here. And as you can see, this is different from the visualizations that we saw in the first paper that we covered. The visualizations in the first paper are like this. Forget about the rest of them. The rest of them is a different methodology when you occlude part of your image to understand which parts are the most important ones. But this is the predictions. These are the visualizations that are coming out of this algorithm. Here you have a different type of method. It's more generic. It's actually giving you more information. But uh, what is the intuition behind it? Let's say you have a neural network, a bunch of convolutions. It takes as input as an image. You're going to end up with some features at the last uh, convolution layer. These are your feature maps. Then we are going to do a global average pooling to come up with these features. So the blue here corresponds to that feature map. The red here corresponds to this other feature map, et cetera. And then the next step is prediction. So some of our networks didn't have, uh, some of our networks uh, like VGG, they don't have a global average pooling at the end. They have a fully connected layer. So you're gonna have to some, do some work, replace the last layer with a global average pooling layer. Basically, you replace the fully connected ones with a global average pooling, and you get some features here that you can bake them. So the plots that you're seeing here are taking W1, multiplying it by the blue feature map, W1 and the blue feature map. The blue, you can see it on the border. That's how the visualization is going. Times plus W2, the second feature map, and the last feature map. And then in the end, you are going to up-resolve it. You are going to increase the resolution of this feature map to have the resolution of your original image. And that's going to help you see where the neural network is focusing when it's making the prediction of an Australian terrier. And it's focusing on the face of the dog and the tail, probably. So let's see the math. That was the intuition. How is the math going? Your feature maps are functions. You have a pixel. X and Y, and you have the kth feature, one, two, and nth feature, for instance. Global average pooling is going to do an average over X and Y, and probably it's dividing by the number of pixels, but it doesn't matter. You get the idea. So you're doing a global average pooling. It's going to give you a number. And then the prediction of the model before the softmax is going to be a weight multiplied by the feature that you just learned. That's going to be the prediction for that class. And we're going to do a softmax on SC. And that's going to give you the probability. But let's focus on SC. SC is the logit before the softmax. And let's take a look at our weights. And as I said, this is just uh, SC as after going through the softmax is going to give you the probability. And here is where the interesting part comes in. And that's why global average pooling is important. You do a global average pooling, that's going to give you a K. To get a C, you do a linear combination of a bunch of weights multiplied by FK. Now, what you can do, everything is linear. You can take this summation to the end, actually to the beginning, put WKC inside both of the summations. And that's exactly what you're plotting. That's exactly the class activation map. That's going to give you how important this map is. And we are using the property that you can 
change the summation, change the location of the summation. And MC is exactly this class activation map that you're seeing. And it's going to give you the importance of activation at a spatial grid XY leading to that particular class. I think I'm one minute over time. For those of you who have questions, you are more than welcome to stay and ask. And the ones who want to leave, you can leave. Yeah, cool stuff.